Welcome to the awakening. I can't believe it. It's program eight. I've been doing this now for eight days. How cool is that? Today is a very special day for me and kind of sad as well. It's the 5th of May. And if my father would have lived, he would have been 99 years old. 99 years old. He was a remarkable man. And a lot of the work that I did with Dad was coming into the darkness, dealing with the darkness, and then coming into the light from the darkness. I just did an interview with a beautiful young man from Uganda who runs an orphanage. And it was so fascinating and exciting to talk to a hero who goes out and takes little children off the streets and gives them a home and gives them a life and gives them compassion and a future, education, a real hero. Now, there's a lot of synchronicity with the fact that I did that interview today on the 5th of May. Because my father was an orphan. My father was a little Jewish Irish orphan. And when he was five years old, my grandfather took him from Ireland and took him into an orphanage in Norwood and left him there on his own. Five years old. Five years old, can you imagine the sadness and the loneliness and the abandonment of that little boy? And he, when dad was old enough, about 13, he ran away. And this is where the darkness that we talk about, the awakening coming from the darkness into the light happened for my father. He, was, he got on the bus to go to Slough because he wanted to try and find work. And the conductor threw him off the bus at Burnham Beaches. Now, you may think that that's horrible, that he, it's dark because what's gonna happen to him when he's stuck in Burnham Beaches? Yes, it's a beautiful place, but he didn't have a home. And how would he get to Slough? He hasn't got enough money. So this is where the miracle occurred and this is where the light came in for my father. Basically, after he got thrown off the bus at Burnham Beaches, he walked into Burnham Beaches and there was a young man and he asked him for a smoke. And they started chatting. And then at the end of the evening, at the end of the day, he started calling my dad Paddy because he was Irish. And this is how the light happened from the dark. And he said to him, Paddy, where are you going? Have you got a home to go to? And my dad said, no, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll sleep on the park bench or I'll sleep in the woods. You know, I'll manage. I'm used to it. And, you know, I'm a street kid now. And this guy said, Uncle Vic said to him, became my Uncle Vic, said, no. No, no, no. Come back with us. You can have dinner with us. I'm sure my mom will make you some tea. And so my dad went back with them, with him, and he was taken in. He was given a home. He was given a life. He was given love. Do you see the synchronicity here of the program that I made on the 5th of May in the memory of my loving dad, who came from the darkness of an orphanage into being adopted into a family? who adored him and brought him up as their own. <laughs> Non-Jewish, who respected him and loved him. I really felt that I wanted to say that today in, in this program, welcome to the awakening. But in order to get into the light, as you know, we have to go through the dark. And I've been encountering some darkness in the last couple of days personally attacking me because of my beliefs in freedom, because of my belief in natural methods, because of my body, the way it is and the way I want to keep it. There seems to be a lot of fear around and people are attacking me directly because of my freedom of speech. Now, 
if I was staying in the darkness, then my whole life would be about this. I'd be going on about it. I'd be carrying on. But as you know, I lead you every day from the darkness into the light. I've been doing this for eight days now. And hopefully it's starting to affect you in a positive way. So today, even though I had that fear, I had that panic, a little bit of panic of things that are going on, um, which again, I'm not going to talk about too much. I got up and I did this. <laughs> I stuck these colors in my hair. Chakras. And look at the chakras I chose. I chose blue for healing. I, blew, I chose orange for creativity and the sacral chakra, blue for the communication and the throat chakra. And I chose pink, pink to make the boys wink, as my mom would say. <laughs> the violet flame, to me, the violet flame, the crown chakra, love, the connection to spirit, waking up, welcome to the awakening. That's what I did today. And I did something kind for a friend. Pause. And I did something kind for a friend. Because that's what I want to do. I want to spread the love. Look, I'm not trying to spread fear. I'm just saying what I have a right to say. In this program, on my status, I believe in freedom. That's all I believe in. I believe in freedom. I do not believe in anything else. I never believed in what they're trying to get us to believe in. I believe in freedom. I believe that freedom is everything. Now, I put on that beautiful video last night of all these countries being released into freedom, asking to work, asking to be free, telling the governments they do not trust them. Fair enough. I agree. We need to take back our power and wake up. Welcome to the awakening. But the power we need to use is by uniting with our fellow man, by being kind, by being loving. And a lot of the time, fear stops that. And I do it as well. There are times when people send me fearful messages and straight away the fear comes in. It comes in, the possibility that my freedom and my life and what I love and, and my health would be taken away from me without my consent is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I do not consent. I will not consent. And I am a free being. We are all free. We are free. We are free. We are free. They tried to convince you by, from the time you were born that you're not free, that you're stuck in a system, that you cannot do what you love, that everything costs a fortune. To go and see your beautiful planet, you have to pay a huge amount of money to get on an airplane to go and sit on a beautiful beach. They took away your right. They took away your rights to enjoy our world. Everything came with conditions from the time you were born. Conditions, conditions, conditions. You fit in. You fit into the box. <laughs> Little boxes on the hillside. That's where that song comes from. Little boxes made of tiki-taki and they all look all tiki-taki and they all look just the same. That's what they've tried to do with us. People laugh at me and say, be your age. What the hell are you doing wearing pink hair extensions? What's wrong with you, Lauren? Be your age. Act your age, not your shoe size. <laughs> you know? No. I will do whatever I want to do, as long as it's not affecting another human being at the moment, I will do whatever I feel is right for me. And that's it at the moment. At this moment, that's all I'm asking. I am asking to stay healthy, 
to put into my body whatever I feel like. And so you can do the same because I am free. I'm not a slave. I never will be a slave. And neither are you. Welcome to the awakening, <laughs> bringing the hope and the glory back into your lives. If you want to go around, shave your head if you want to. It's up to you. Dance around singing in the streets. I've done it. It's up to you. Get on the stage once the lockdown is finished. It's up to you. If you see a leaflet that says, we need to be free, see you in Hyde Park. It's up to you. The rest of the world is doing it. David Icke showed us the freedom and the love everywhere. Why shouldn't the UK have the same? <laughs> I don't get it. Why do people not want to be free? See, I don't understand it. I left Israel. I left a country that wanted me to go in the army forever, more or less, because I didn't have kids. So every year I would have to give a few months of my life to the army. I said, no, I'm Irish. I was born in Ireland, in Dublin. I am leaving. And I left. And I came back to civilization. And I celebrated getting up in the morning and knowing that I wouldn't have to be at war or at the threat of war. Um, it's so exciting. It's so exciting to be free. And that's what's happening with the Great Awakening. People are realizing they have a right to be free. And why should anybody get angry with me? Because I'm celebrating being free and nothing will stop that. So why would anybody get upset about that? Do you understand it? Anyway. <laughs> Coming back to welcome to the awakening. I want to talk a little bit about guilt and how we feel guilty for everything. And that's the darkness. A lot of us are children that were brought up to believe that they, may, they did everything wrong. I know I, I was. And I was crying last night because I felt I hurt someone because I couldn't live up to the promises I made. So I hurt this person. And I, I hate doing that because then I feel so guilty. <laughs> but it brought back a memory when I was a child and I was lying in bed. And I was a very unhappy child as I've gone through abuse. I've gone through all sorts of stuff, which is, I'm working through it now. I'm still working through it. So life is a work in progress. The awakening is bringing it all up. So don't fight it. Don't fight it. Let the heart chakra open. You can't live with all this darkness. You need to bring it up. You need to come into the light. So anyway, there I was crying because I missed my dad and because I felt like that. I felt lonely. I felt scared last night. And my husband came to sit with me and I said to him, this is bringing back a memory when um, dad was going to go to work in the morning and he was always stressed out. And I would lie crying in my bed. I just cry and cry and cry. I couldn't go to sleep. So much has happened to me. So unhappy. And never once did my parents come and give me a hug. They just let me carry on crying. I never got any compassion. It was just like, oh, go to sleep, Lauren. We've got to go to work. That was it. So that came up in a big way. And the guilt of um, not the guilt of feeling like I don't have, well, I'm, I must be wrong. There's something wrong with me because I'm keeping my mum and dad awake. And if I don't stop crying, they won't be able to go to work in the morning. That was very, very difficult for me to deal with as a child. And so guilt holds you back. So thinking about dad yesterday, calling on him, asking him to be there to comfort me, to love me, it started to come up inside me. And I knew I had to say a little bit today about guilt. Children are innocent. They're not to blame for anything. If adults do something to you, it's because they're stressed out. It's because they're unhappy. I see a lot of people now living their childhoods again. 
I feel the lockdown and Doris, the virus, as you know, I call it Doris, which is neuro, neuro linguistic programming because it helps the mind think I cannot be scared of a little old lady down the road. And the more scared you are, you'll get sick because fear makes us sick. That's what I feel. And I'm entitled to say it. Fear makes you sick. It constricts everything inside your body. Your lymphatics can flow. Your body goes into fight and flight and you can get sick, okay? So when I was thinking about all of this and all the fear and all the guilt comes into your body, I believe a lot of people, people that are threatening me in particular, people that are scared to go out of their houses and go to a park, because of all the fear mongering. I believe that they've gone back to being children again. They're children. They're children. They're reliving their childhood traumas like I do, except I'm able to deal with it and understand the difference between a childhood trauma and an adult who's going through trauma. I know where to go in my mind. I know to sit with it. I know how to do it. And if you need to learn, please contact me. I'm moving on TV one at gmail.com. That's my new email address. So you are innocent. Whatever happened to you as a child, you are innocent. You are innocent. And if you're feeling like a child, that's your traumas that are coming up. That's your fear that's coming up. And me, I'm just a mirror. I'm a mirror that's bringing up your fears. So if you don't like me, if you feel threatened by what I say, if you feel threatened by how I look, if you feel threatened in any way, it's because I'm pushing your buttons to feel, really feel that fear. And when you feel that fear, you can release it. You can go from the darkness into the light again. All my work is around feeling the fear, letting it come up, discovering where it fits in my life. Is it catastrophizing? Is it coming from the past or the future? If it's coming from the past, then I have to give my little girl a chance to come up and clear it. If it's coming from the future, then that's silly. Because 99% of what we fear doesn't actually happen. But there, are, there is proof, there is evidence, there is a bill. And we need to know that there is a letter which is asking for a good solution for all of us. If you don't want to come out of lockdown, it's up to you. But it's sad. It's sad that you won't enjoy nature ever again. How long are you going to do this for? What, what are you going to believe? How long are you going to stay locked up? How long is it before you'll hug your own child again? How long is it before you'll go and see a friend? Until the government tells you? Or will you do your own research and see what's really going on? And I bet you, from all those people that stood together outside, in all these countries shouting freedom and we want our jobs back and we want our lives back, none of them will end up with Doris. None of them, not one of them. Very few maybe, if, because freedom, this is a war and our freedom is everything everything the freedom your freedom the freedom of your kids the freedom of your families is everything to know you're safe to know you're equal to everybody else is everything and if you don't believe in that if you're so pushed down and numb and you want to live like you live that's your choice but do not impose it on me and the millions of warriors out there that are working hard to release you from being a slave. That's not up to us. That's up to you to choose that. 
if you want it. If you don't, that's your choice too. But do not impose anything on us. Because that is coming from the darkness into the light, as far as I'm concerned. As you see, the light, the dark. The light, the dark. Now, I'm going to choose a card from how to stay sane in a crazy world. And let's see how synchronistic it may be today. <laughs> These cards, I have to stay sane in a crazy world, were channeled by me when I came out of the therapeutic community. At 12 pounds, we posted. They sell them at the Positivity Centre in Ashton. And they may have them on the online shop. I'll have to find out for you. I'm not sure. But I'm going to close my eyes now. I want to choose a card that helps as many people as possible with love. I chose balance. That is amazing. <laughs> balance. This is wonderful. This is particularly wonderful for people like me that go completely out of balance and get so caught up in everything, wanting to save the freedom of the world. Today is about coming back into balance. Imagine you've got a metaphorical scale that is running across your body from left to right. How, how are you in the middle of it? Or are you leaning too much to the right or the left? And we're talking about a scale here, not politics. Today, bring yourself back into line. Too much excitement and good feelings or too much sadness is not actually good for us. It can lead to being accelerated and then depressed. Up and down, mercury. My mum used to say I'm a mercury because I used to go a bit up and down, up and down, up and down. Are you? <laughs> balance keeps me sane and happy on a daily basis. Balance keeps you sane and happy on a daily basis. Beautiful. Sometimes I get up and I don't have very good balance. I don't know about you. My ba the balance is to not be very good in my body. The balance doesn't seem to be very good in my mind. And so what I'm saying is you can use this card. I will put it up. There it is. It's probably back to front though. If you can read back to front, good luck. Sorry about that. <laughs> balance. It's all about balance. Uh, I'm going to take a picture of it with my phone. So balance. The scales coming into balance. That is a very good lesson for me today. I live with a Libra, <laughs> very balanced Libra. And one of my very dear friends is a Libra. She's a Libra too. So I have a lot of Librans in my life. I wonder why. <laughs> It's trying to say something to the Leo, the lion that roars. I'm a Leo. I'm a lion that roars. <laughs> I'm a lion that roars and loves to tell you how amazing you are. So there you go. That's the awakening today. So awaken, welcome to the awakening, bringing the hope and the glory back into our lives. You can contact me at movingontv1 at gmail.com. That's my new email address. Or 07437532798. Please come on the program. Do your own. Host your own show. As long as you're about love, freedom, and freedom. And supporting your fellow man and not hurting your fellow man or the environment in any way. You're welcome on the show. And let's check A Course in Miracles today, which I missed yesterday. Right. Course in Miracles today is all about 
Let me remember, well, lesson one, two, four. Let me remember I am one with love. God is love to me, unconditional love. Let me remember that I am one with love. I am one with God. Let me remember I am one with love. I am protected. The violet flame is sealing me. The angels are everywhere protecting me and protecting all of the warriors. And I send love to all my indigo and crystal uh, brothers and sisters all over the world. I send love to everyone who is shouting in a positive way. Give me back my freedom. I love you. We don't need to worry anymore. We've got this. We've got this. And so, <laughs> my husband laughs at me because there's always an actually and so, or a little bit more. Um, I just wanted to add on something which has completely gone out of my mind. Um, what was it I wanted to say? I can't remember now. I can't remember, except the beautiful film that David Icke put out and the beautiful song of freedom, we will never be slaves, a bit like Ruby Chanya, we will never ever be slaves again. This is not going to happen again. We are rising, we are awake, we are awake, we do not consent, and we ain't having it. As Ralph Smart says, on a daily basis, we ain't having it. <laughs> so that's it. Maybe it'll come to me soon what it is I wanted to end, it, end this on. Because there's been a whole lot of stuff. I'm going to dedicate this to my dad, Isid Medali, my lovely father, who supported me, who brought me up to believe that religion doesn't matter. Um, one of the beautiful things he taught me was to love animals, even spiders. Little spivvies, he used to call them. I love you, Dad. I know you're happy now. I know you're looking over us. You're looking after us. All our loved ones are looking after us. They, they are sending all the love to the world to heal, to protect us. All is good. All is beautiful. Namaste. Please share this everywhere. And um, welcome to the awakening. Thank you. Bye.